Have you told your parents yet? About what? About us living together? I thought about it, and I was like, hey, let's just never do that. Oh. I thought you were a burglar, but you still were going to answer the door. Yeah, to kick your ass. Where's mom? In the kitchen where a woman belongs. I'm just kidding. She's in the kitchen. It's her choice. Gerard and I have something to tell you, don't we? Yes. I am thinking about registering Republicans. Oh, no! <laughs> OK, this isn't what we're here to discuss. Do we really know why we voted for Obama? None of you can tell me why you voted for him without using the words hope or change. Michelle! <laughs> What's that on your plate, Dad? You just had triple bypass surgery. What happened was I was eating some ribs, and I had this nacho cheese dipping sauce, and then I thought, well, hell. I am taking away your ribs. I'm not going to let You have lost your privileges. I got something I got to tell you, Mom and Dad. Maxine moved in three weeks ago. Uh-oh. Well, congratulations. Living in sin. Just nasty. Look at you. All holier than thou. Acting like we didn't have sex before we got married. <laughs> From Gerard Carmichael and Nicholas Stoller. When do you plan on having children? Bobby and Akeisha got divorced three months ago. <laughs> we do not get divorces in this family. We just suffer through it. Gerard Carmichael, Amber West, Lil Rail Howery, Loretta Devine, and David <laughs> Allen Greer. Oh, what is this? It's Pinot Grigio. Pinot? Oh, huh? It's white. <laughs> oh. You like white, right? Not as much as your daddy. <laughs> The Carmichael Show premieres August 5th on NBC. Hey, you guys. How's it going? Hello, Gerard. Hello. How are you? Good, thanks. Can I, can I say something? I shouldn't say it. I'm going to get in trouble for it. I hate that trailer. That was the, that's a bad trailer. It's not good. The, the show's good. <laughs> the trailer is not good at all. Right. It's just a bunch of black people yelling. Why would you watch that? <laughs> and, but it but it goes to this, and I'm sorry, I'm like talking Keep going. about it. Like, no, this is I was good. in the back and I was just like, oh God, that one. You know, you mm. feel like, oh, that doesn't represent the what I'm trying to do here. It's just it, it it comes from like fear, which is in like marketing, especially with comedies and stuff. Oh, but a lot of those like clips are in the, it's all from the pilot. And a lot of it's the accent you know, what I hope were more tense moments that you break mm -hmm. with just something loud and something whatever, but it's this fear of like, well, if we show them a real moment, they're not gonna know it's a comedy. You know, yeah. it's, it's just that, to me, that shows the, a lack of respect for the intellect of like American audiences, so I don't like the trailer. But how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> you doing okay? Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming to our chat with Gerard Carmichael. Yeah. Hi, you guys. Um, I have a lot to ask you about, about the Carmichael show. But first, Let's talk about it. But first, as first, I hear that you were with the queen last night. The queen? Meryl Streep. Oh you, oh, you better believe it. She's one of the... Here's the thing. I don't know when people are talking about Beyonce or not. And so like, it's like, isn't it crazy that you... I hear queen and my first thought is Beyonce, and there are queen. like actual queens in the world like, wow. that are like by title. And I'm like, no, but you, you mean Beyonce, clearly. Meryl, another. Yes. Meryl's another, yeah. Yes. I mean, in some circles, known as the Beyonce of acting. I mean, that's what she's been called for years now. And very, uh, by circles, I mean my cousin April's house. <laughs> I mean, what was that like? To, to, you, you were on The Tonight Show with her last night, we should, we should yeah, say. Yeah, I was on The Tonight Show with her, uh, and I didn't meet her at all. But <laughs> I walked by her, and that was enough. That was cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to... So we were, she was at a show. I did this show at the Knitting Factory on Sunday, and she was in the back at a, at a, uh, like a concert, uh, and I saw her get into a car, and I was gonna stop her, but I felt like, hey, I'm on The Tonight Show with you tomorrow. While it sounds like a good icebreaker, it could also, like, frighten her mm -hmm. and make her cancel. Well, I think I she's stalking you is what this sounds like. It kind of, but I didn't want to, I needed I mean, you to say it. Yeah. <laughs> So the Carmichael show. The Carmichael show. Yeah, um, we didn't get to see it in the trailer, which, as we now know, you, you're not a huge fan of. But uh, yeah. the opening scene is a is a shot of you dancing and singing along to a Taylor Swift song. Not anymore. I changed that. I also That's changed too. That changed. Well, it's a different version of that. Look, okay. it's <laughs> it was an is idea. Is it still that, the Carmichael show? It's still the Carmichael show. Okay. That still remains. <laughs> we we I changed that because it was so sugary. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which was which was which was fun for a moment, but then it's all it's all in context. It's like, well, what what are we following? What's the lead in? Mm -hmm. You know, and once you factor in like, well, what shows are happening around it, and will this be received as like a fun moment, or will this be received as the same content that you've been getting? So we uh, we altered it slightly. Yeah. So yeah. We, now, I guess, is your chance. I say we for decisions that I've made to make it sound softer. <laughs> we we decided we weren't happy with. Uh, how, that just means I got, you know, I was like, no. <laughs> so, so how would you then sell the Carmichael show to everyone here if the trailer is not doing the exact I would, correct job? I would say it's a, it's a first of all, it's a conversation. Um, and I, it, it's people that exist in the real world, which is very important to me. Especially in the sitcom, you see, um, you see these characters and you, you, these events play out that don't reflect anything that's happening in our lives. You know, that don't, doesn't reflect the water cooler conversations or the elevator conversations that we all have. And so it, you know, for me, it's just, it was really important to have, you know, characters that talk about the things we talk about, that have the problems we have, that, you know, have the, the same amount of curiosity for culture and what's going on in the world. So that's what the show is. It's a, a lot of conversations. It's a lot of, scenes where we stay in one place and we talk about things and for me the goal is to have an interesting con a, a very interesting 22 minute conversation is yeah. the goal of, of every episode so i think you know, while the pilot you know the I, the pilot's fun and i am proud of the pilot i think it, especially you know going into our other episodes after the pilot we uh, we did a um an episode about uh, essentially uh, like the Black Lives Matter movement. We did an episode last week where a teenager tells me that he's transgendered and that he's a, 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 it's a woman trapped inside mm -hmm. a man's body. And these like real issues that, you know, that we don't make light of. I, I, I try and handle these things with as much integrity as you possibly can. But we, we find the humor in the characters mm -hmm. and their reactions and their you know, the, the maybe ignorance of certain things or the wisdom on certain things, and just we play with that to find the humor. But it's, I, I, it, it becomes more of the show I'm excited about, mm -hmm. I think, you know, the further we get into it. Yeah. And that seems like a challenging thing to do, to talk about subjects like Black Lives Matter and the trans movement, yeah. especially when you're doing a sitcom where there's a laugh track and yeah. there's well, a lot of... No, I, that's another thing. I mean, you, you try and keep it as authentic as possible, which is... Hard, Kevin. But it's I'm fun. It's fun to do. But you, but it's like no laugh track. There are certain moments that just shouldn't be as funny as other moments. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's like once again, it's respecting the intellect of the American audience, which, which oftentimes cable shows give us. You know, you know, Breaking Bad respects that all of us are people. You know, that have you know intelligence and you know and and, and able to follow a complex story or com a complex dialogue and and not saying that the show is like complex story or anything but but it's you know I, I I like to think that it's a bit smarter so you know just following that we try and track that so I mean is it what what has it been like for you to try to sell a show that respects an audience intellect on a broadcast network that is not, may, may be notorious for not doing that and for what for wanting to pander to Taylor Swift songs and laugh tracks and yeah. things like that. What has that been? What has that experience been like for you? Um, everyone, if you can articulate what you want to do, you articulate your vision for something. Everyone is very excited in theory. You mm -hmm. know, in theory, everybody's on board. Yeah, we're gonna do. Like you, like it's like planning a, a trip to Vegas. Everybody's like really excited about, yeah, we're all going, to, it's going to be the best summer ever. And then the realities of whatever sets in is like, oh, I got to take off work and I got to do this. And it <laughs> all becomes like, let's do Vegas next year. And, but that's how like people are very excited in theory. And when, when you say, hey, I, you know, I want 15 page scenes. Mm -hmm. where, and, it's like, and so then when do you leave the living room? But we don't leave the living room. And they're like, that's interesting. And then you write it and they're like, Hey, we don't leave the living room. I'm like, yeah, remember when I told you? Mm -hmm. You know, like a couple of weeks. So everyone's excited. It's just keeping everyone on board with the vision is the, mm -hmm. the, the most difficult task is keeping everyone on board with the vision until completion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it should be said too that NBC really, really, really wanted to work with you on this. They, yeah. I mean, th th this has, I mean, it was fat tracks development first. This is now this second. Development. Can I guess walk us through the process. Is that what the article said? Yeah, the the. No, I'm joking. Yeah, I'm joking. Yeah. They were really fun. They <laughs> they've been very nice. It's like any relationship that builds over time. 
you start to know each other, you start to understand each other. And you know, and there and with that said, it, it's very smart, great executives here. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's it's the process. It's it's the entire process that makes it a bit more difficult to navigate through. But but it's some really amazing people who feel very passionate about Simran Sethi was uh is uh uh with the company and she was who brought me in and felt as passionate about the show since, you know, introducing me to everyone else as she is now. So, you know, some really great people. Mm -hmm. And when someone approaches you and says, we want to do a show with your name in the title, what kind of pressure does that bring along with it? It's, it's <laughs> not... I chose to have my name in the title for the reason of it, it holds me accountable. Mm -hmm. Uh, artistically, right? Mm -hmm. Because then it's like, then you fight extra hard because this is your name, you know, and these, you know, my, my mother's here and she, and like, <laughs> it's a character named after my mom. So you don't want it. You want to, you have to, it has to have integrity mm -hmm. because otherwise with a different name, it's easy to go, yeah, all right, we could do that. It's easy. It's very easy to give in in these processes, mm -hmm. but, but it, it, it holds me accountable. So I chose to have the name, not even for vanity reasons, but just for the accountability. Mm -hmm. Because like, well, if it's your name in your face, you, you need to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And at least in the pilot, there's some really funny and really observational and really astute dialogue going on about the relationship of religion and politics and the yeah. family. You just mentioned your mother. How, how much of the, that conversation is is a mirror to you know your own life and what it's been like for you some of it some of it is very like my mom wrote a line in the pilot that got the biggest response from the audience <laughs> really yeah it was uh we're we're talking about religion i don't even remember the specific line but what, what the line was but we we're talking about religion and we got stuck and it was late and and i called my mom and woke her up and was like, hey, what would you say right now? And then I just wrote down what she said. Completely, I owe you money. I yeah, completely, getting royalties for this, I'll, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I owe her a writer's credit. But, you know, that's NBC's problem. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah, so it's mm -hmm. sometimes very, very, you know, like, and then oftentimes it's still characters. Mm -hmm. So it's not her. And it's me. It's more me <laughs> than anything. Mm -hmm. I kind of keep my perspective pretty true but you know you get into situations and it's still stories that may not be true to your real life yeah. but the 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 core you know the intention is pretty true mm -hmm. and you've done a lot of stand-up before and, and i think that yeah. when a person who's done stand-up gets their own sitcom and the sitcom has their name in the title people assume that a lot of it is derived directly from some of the acts that they've done yeah i mean what is the relationship between some of the stand-up comedy that you've done and, and what we're seeing on the show and a and lot of that? a lot of my stand-up comedy is actual thoughts you know it's it's it all comes from this the resource of truth so you know it, it's the same thing like when writing for the show or writing for stand-up is just hey i had this thought how would this play out in public you know it's yeah. kind of what it is you know the you know the it, for me, it's, as an artist, is the decision to play a thought out in public, which is the, that's what the content is. Mm -hmm. So it's either the show or stand up, and so it comes from the same place. So it's it's really a blurred line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we were in the green room, you you referenced Golden Girls, yes, Blues Clues, yes, the Phil Donahue show, mm -hmm. and I think Allegra's Window. Um, Great. So. I'm having gone through that. I'm, I'm very and now they know they're dealing with an insane person. <laughs> it's like, why? If this was within like 30 seconds. <laughs> well, given that array of programming that you referenced and just you know those few minutes you spent together, I'm curious what what are some of the um, past TV shows you've looked to to you know sort of draw from with this, and maybe what some of your inspirations were comedically. Ooh, it's a great question. I mean, I guess. The most direct line would be to uh, Norman Lear and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of his content, uh, which reflected the culture so well, so well in the 70s, early 80s, it reflected the, the culture very, very well. And then and then it just, it, as far as the sitcom goes, just disappeared. Right. You know, and it's, it's like, you know, and you, you hear the cries that we're PC and these things, uh, you know, and we try not to let that fear you know, uh, inhibit us from creating anything. So, but so I would say Norman Lear, just because of the fearlessness of the content and mm -hmm. you know, and the honesty of it, and how much it reflected culture. And then, I mean, kind of everything. I've watched 
a lot of television. Yeah. <laughs> and like a lot of, which is what happens when you can't play sports. And <laughs> and you watch really a lot hate. of TV. Yeah. And so I would just, you know, so everything. Watch a lot of Phil Donahue, a lot of Allegra's Window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, are there any shows that are on TV now that you think do what Norman Lear did so well then, what you're trying to do now? Do, 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 can you see sort of appear in that on television now? I mean, you get it not... I can't think of any sitcom that does it. Is it weird that sirens make me really nervous? Okay. <laughs> Even when I mean, you've done that's why I'm shutting wrong. down. I'm not thinking at all. I'm just, I need to know where that officer is going. <laughs> all right, he sounds close. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what was the question? I'm oh, sorry, I literally got distracted. Uh, um, no, really, what was uh, the question? Shows that are on TV now oh, that you think sort of. So, not sitcoms. I can't think of mm -hmm. sitcoms that do, but I mean, The Daily Show is, you know, I guess the best example of tying, you know, people with, you know, current events and, uh, you know, John Stewart. It's kind of sad to see him go, but mm -hmm. this is his last week, I believe, right? Yeah, and, Thursday's his last day. Yeah, and, you know, I watched that. I watched The Daily Show. I've watched that, like, every day since, like, 2003. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, well, every day it's been on. And, uh, but I can't think of a, in, the, in this format, it, it's not really shows us doing it. And, look, I mean, we're, we're making a, our best attempt, just mm -hmm. putting our best foot forward to try and do it. It's just, I'm just saying it just hasn't. I can't think of any that do yeah. it currently. Yeah. Uh, this past TV season, especially around the time that Blackish was premiering and mm -hmm. I think it was an anniversary of the Cosby show, mm -hmm. um, I, know, I know I was uh, asked to sit on a lot of pop culture panels and talk about sort of what has happened to family sitcoms about a black family in the time period between the Cosbys and Blackish, and why it may have taken a while for another hit to come about, whether shows were targeted at minority audiences instead of mainstream audiences, and the advantages and disadvantages in that. Um, you, this is a show with a black family on it. Yeah. Um, what, what, were you ever worried that, that it might fall into that same trap of where it's, you know, being targeted to a specific demographic and not a mainstream audience where it, de it deserves to be seen by yeah. everyone. There's value in everyone seeing this humor. It's not for an audience. It's not, I appreciate it's not you saying for... That. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so, for so, saying so that. So were you nervous that you know, it was going to be marketed in that way? I mean, it, it, it happens. You know, like, I mean, I mean, you're still... Look, it's television, right? And, and as much as I love to talk about art and, you know, the intention as an artist... We are here to sell Charmin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we are here to sell Charmin. We are the like we we look at it as you know it's about the shows and the commercials is what fills time in between. But the reality is quite the opposite. <laughs> you know we we are keeping you in tune to watch more mm -hmm. commercials. And so, I, I mean, I'm I'm trying to think of how to answer this without getting myself in trouble. <laughs> It's really, really hard. <laughs> it's really, really hard. I mean, God, it's really, really hard. Because I already feel like I've, with the Charmin line, I've already lost Charmin. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, they got me, too. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like we, did we lose Charmin? They'll target you toward specific audiences, you know, because you want to sell. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, well, if it can easily reach this market, then let's do that. And right. you know, and products come accordingly. But I like to think of it as an American family. Mm -hmm. I like to think that. I mean, you know, I don't. We don't. I don't write toward any type of yeah. stereotype. And I also, if something hap. I mean, listen. Some of it, it gets kind of loud. I. It's it, that could. Uh, it's always a concern that people be distracted by that and uh, like, oh, and dismissive of what the content is mm -hmm. because of sometimes the volume, which is another reason I have an issue with that trailer. I'm going to get off the trailer. I'm saying that to NBC <laughs> now. I'm going to get off the trailer. But, mm -hmm. like, you know, but I think I don't think of it as a black show. I think of it mm -hmm. as just as an American show, you know, right. as the Cosby show was. And I think a lot of times when you're trying to, specifically for black sitcoms, you can't imitate the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. You can't imitate anything in art. You know, like you can't, like, you know, it's always going to be a lesser version of it if you try and imitate it and you try and follow the exact same rule book as, as the Cosby show. Same thing if you are a white show, you can't imitate Seinfeld right. unless you really feel the way Seinfeld did. So w what you saw in, in between th this time, a lot of times is kind of, you saw a lot of imitations of the Cosby show. You saw a lot of, 
uh, things that were disingenuous to the show's creator, the show creator's experience. So I, I just tried to avoid that. I just tried mm -hmm. to make a thing that was as truthful to me as possible and just put that out and, you know, see what people think. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you know, I didn't get myself in trouble. No, not at all. That was a really okay. intelligent Thank answer. You, I, <laughs> it. Um, I was well like, done. oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I literally, in my, in my mind, you're just like, yeah, it's about black shows. And I was just, I, my gauge was just like, I put Lee Daniels' face <laughs> in my head. And I was just seeing, if you started frowning, yeah. then I stopped saying. Yeah, what would Shonda Rhimes say? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, the, the other thing I want to ask you about before I turn it over to the audience mm -hmm. is um, Neighbors 2. I, Neighbors 2, back in the habit. Very yeah. excited. You oh, God. If, if Whoopi Goldberg showed no, up, that I That never sticks. I always try and get it to stick. <laughs> um, what, can you, what can you tell us about you know, what, what you know about it so far? You know, have, you, have, you, have you done any prep for it? We did a, we did a table read uh, a week ago. It's fun. It's exciting. It's a new direction. I'm in it a little bit. I'm in it enough. I come and say it. it's fun. I have a fun part. I'm probably spoiling something. I'm a cop in this one. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, the irony. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, it's, I don't, it's like we read it. You know, the script changes and evolves, but it's funny, and I think people really like it. It would be fun. Yeah. I, gotta, I have to learn how to ride a horse. Oh, God. If that's any indication. So, I mean, that ain't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're It'll be fun. It'll be a fun yeah. movie. Well, we're all looking forward to it. Oh, cool. Um, and now we uh, want to turn it over to the audience if they have any, any questions. Hi. So, um, so, I might get you in trouble again, and I apologize. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Damn um, it. We were uh, so close. Uh, so, I was just interested in, um, there seems to be this trend going on where um, even if a show or a, uh, or a topic seems to be specifically coded as being black, it has to be, for publicity's sake, coded as being American. Do you think of that as an erasure, or is that just part of including us in the American narrative? Like what, what is the issue with, name, with, with claiming its blackness and yeah. just in being able to inhabit that space? Yeah, and I, and I think about that a lot. Um, just even where black people are in, in America, right? And this is one of the first times, and I don't, know, I don't know if this is a controversial thing, it's the, the first time in American history where black people can at least really start to just be human beings. You know what I mean? Where, where, to be beyond it. And, and it's like, and just to really embrace whoever you are, whatever your, your likes and dislikes are, and like not follow the rule book or the handbook of, you know, the definition of being black. So in, in fitting with that, God bless you, what, in fitting with that is, is also like the shows and the art should re should reflect that. It, like it should be human beings. A in my opinion, I think it should be human beings. If the experience is relatable to black audiences, beautiful. That's great. And if it's relatable to beyond that, you you, you want to open yourself up to that. For me as a creator, you just the worst thing is being inhibited by anything. And I think you know you you always try and r like outrun the boundaries of the walls. You have a responsibility. You definitely have a responsibility in, in being black and you, you want, because I would love, whatever this show does, I hope that there are more black creators. I hope that it's more. I hope that it, that it, it restores, if, if, if it needs restoration, I hope it helps restore faith in black creators or even people like me who are very new and just jumped into sitcom and like, I'm hoping it restores faith. So there is responsibility there, but you hope that you are, and you hope that I hope that me as a person can transcend any type of any type of boundary. You know, like if, like I, if it were just if it were male dominated, female dominated, your race, sex, anything, just try and go beyond any boundary and just be human. You know. Great. Next question. Hi. Hi, you're awesome. Thank you so much. You're very oh, inspiring. Thank you. Um, I actually do stand up here in New York City, and you started doing stand up in Los Angeles. Is that yes. Right? Can you talk to us maybe about the differences between the two cities and doing stand up, and what it's like going from stand up into doing more acting and and sitcom? Yeah. Um, I love New York. I would. I actually used to. I would come to New York from January to March of every year to avoid pilot season in LA. <laughs> uh, the because, irony. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I don't want to be I didn't want to be a sassy black neighbor. That's my biggest fear. <laughs> my biggest fear is just as I, you know, I was like, fit. thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's still early. There's still hope. I said I don't want to be. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I would no, but so stand up in New York, I mean, 
I mean, just by how the city's out, laid out, you can do more spots, you can get up more often, which is always great. Um, I think the difference is a lot of times is in the in the artist's head because I, I didn't go up as much as my friends who live in New York, but I tried to make every set very effective. And I don't do things just for the sake of doing it or say it for, you know, just for the sake of hearing myself speak. Uh, so, you know, it's like if I write a joke, I may I, I only need it to really try it once that night. And some people need to try it five and it's just your process. So it's kind of your your process as an artist like if it's if you if you feel like that that repetition helps or if you it makes you create more then yeah absolutely you should be in new york i also had you know a love of film and television and i knew that i wanted to create things in, in those spaces so la was just the logical first step for me because i'm very intrigued by the industry and how it works and you know, in creating content, so I wanted to be there uh, among, I hope that answered your question. I'm always, okay, cool. <laughs> All the best to you. Next question. So um, with this new idea of just creating a show about a conversation and the topics of the conversation, like politics and religion, have you had any run-ins with the network at all about this? Like, have they, you know, maybe tried to question it or try to, like, stop you from anything that you would write? They've been, they've been pretty good. Because it's been such a long process, you know, and like I said, we kind of know each other. They, you, they know the things that I won't necessarily budge on. Another benefit is looking at things that could be perceived as a negative, as, as a positive, right? So, for instance, I get a little leeway. We're debuting in the summer. We come out, we're we going to come out August 5th. Now it's August 26th. Uh, and so just by not being the fall show, right? And, the, you know, the fall show is where all the, you know, that's where the money goes. <laughs> but, but, like, it, just by not being that, some of the ire gets taken away. A little bit more freedom. It's the summer show. Yeah, and not saying that the network is dismissive at all because they have been very passionate about it, but all those types of factors contribute to, you know, me creating more of what I want. And so not a lot of feedback. And once again, it's handling these topics with integrity because it's not just, a, I don't think any of the things I mentioned from transgender to Black Lives Matter, uh, we have th talking about religion, I don't think of these things as punchlines and I don't write them as such. You know, they have punchlines in the moments, but it's like we try and handle it with as much integrity as possible. So I think the network respects that. I'm always curious if there's anything that was off limits completely, where there is like, no, 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 no. We haven't hit that yet. I'm sure we will. I'm sure, we, I've been trying to get the N word on, in every script. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes just out of nowhere. <laughs> just, it's not even necessary, but I just wanna, I would, I really would love to hear uh, David Allen Greer like, nigga, did you eat all the chips? But we couldn't. <laughs> but that, I'll slide it in a script. It's mm -hmm. just like, and like the showrunner be like, no, no, mm -hmm. no, that's not the battle we should be having right now. <laughs> but just for fun. But that's just for me. That does nothing to move culture forward. <laughs> all right, next question for the audience. Hey, Gerard. Uh, on this show, with uh, being executive producer, writer, star, do you like handling all those roles or does it? maybe take away from doing more stand-up than you'd like to. And uh, also, I'm wondering if you're going to be doing any more voices for any more Lucas Brothers Lucas moving Brothers. company. Love that show. The move into prime time. The move into prime time. I don't know if that, I don't know. If you live in L.A. long enough, you don't know what's a secret and what's not. But, I, the, oh, yeah, I love the Lucas Brothers, and they just moved to L.A. So that, to answer that first, yes, a lot of that. Uh, uh, to answer the first half of your question, what was the first half of your question? I want to make sure I'm answering it right. Oh, do, do you, when balancing all these hats, you miss? Um, oh, which, yeah. yeah. I, I don't get to do a lot of stand up, you know, while we're writing and creating. You, you know, I don't get to do a lot of stand up, which I don't mind, because like I said, it, a lot of the same thoughts just go into the show. So I don't mind not doing a bunch of stand up uh, at all. Uh, I like the balance. I wouldn't have done it without being an executive producer, so it's the most important role to me you know more than more than anything I care about that you know like you know uh so because that's really I mean that's really who's controlling the vision what you see on the screen it, it's produced it's a producer's medium and you know and they you the script and everything you know changes according to what the producers want so that's the most important role 
And then, and it's fun to act. I mean, it's, I like balancing because all of them are equally fun. You know, you get to act with actors that I really admire and respect. So it's really fun. Loretta Divine. Loretta Divine. She's yeah. so funny in the, in the pilot I saw. Yeah, she's, she's so really funny. funny. Yeah. She's, she's amazing. Yeah. She's really amazing, yeah. Um, David Allen Career. They, they met in 84 on uh, <laughs> Dreamgirls. Oh, wow. On Broadway. They met in 84. Yeah. So, like, they have, they actually are like a married couple. <laughs> you know, like, their interactions, even off camera, are very yeah. much so like a married couple. So it's very, like, natural, authentic reactions. Great. Uh, next question. Hey, how's it going? Can you please tell us about your HBO special, Love at the Shore? Oh, uh, yeah, Love at yeah. the Shore is, uh, what do you want to know? What do you want to know about you, it? First of all, how did it feel doing, you know, one hour, you know, stand-up comedy special for mm -hmm. HBO and, you know, just like any highlights of it? Directed yeah. by Spike Lee. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> it was great. He was funny. Um, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was a very open question. I, I, wanna, I don't want to give you, like, the, I, it was, it was, it was my first time doing stand-up on television. Uh, the same thing with anything. I, I didn't want to do it on most outlets because I, if you have to alter being yourself, then it's like, what's the point? <laughs> you know, like as an artist. And sometimes late night shows want you to do jokes a certain way. And so it was really this really great blessing, really, to have HBO, you know, who really respects the, the what the artist wants. And they were very open and you know I wanted to have Spike Lee direct it and he you know we called him and then I got a phone call from a Brooklyn number and Spike <laughs> you know and then we talked gentrification and specials for uh, I mean. <laughs> for a little while and 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 so it was fun it, it was it was fun because you know I really view it as art and I wanted to do something that was different than the norm I didn't want it to be shiny and bright I wanted it to be very raw I wanted it to be very jarring I want like it, it's a lot of very intentional things in there and it came out I'm really happy with it, it feels great it feels really great I hope people like it next question Back to you, Kevin. And we're all out of questions. Everybody's just like, we get it. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Gerard, very much for doing this. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I want to make sure everyone knows that the premiere date is actually August 26th, not August 5th, like the sign says. So make sure you check it out. See? And uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys.